you started your business, things are starting to go well, you're doing, let's say, between 25,000 to 100,000 in sales per month, you're feeling good. What should you start looking at at that point once your business is, okay, this is real, we're going to do something here? So once your business becomes a business, I want to kind of give you, I don't know if any of you guys are, are baseball fans, but now you need to start thinking about your product a little bit of a layer higher level. And you need to be thinking about it almost like a, a batter. It's um, as we're recording this kind of the, you know, major league baseball playoffs are happening, right? And, and something that really matters for a batter is what their batting average is. What's the, what's the expected impact of every time this guy steps up to the plate? And in, in Amazon KPI language, that's called return on inventory investment. Every time I invest money in inventory and I turn that inventory, so I actually like sell it, what was the happiness? Is this like a, a, a guy that's batting 500 and is just crushing it? Or is this a really bad, bad batting average? And so I want you to start thinking about what is my return on inventory investment? And again, we're not going to get in the math, but it's just profit divided by cogs. I'll, I'll make sure I have a link to a video on how to do the math here. But I just want to know how potent this product is at taking my hard-earned cash. I either borrowed the dollar, I invested the dollar from my um, from my own savings account, or I begged and had mom give it to me. However, I got this dollar. I now want to know what the return on investment is. And so that's called return on inventory investment. Most of those same tools, if they're calculating kind of an ROI, like Helium 10s, it normally is this return on inventory investment. And we want this to be 100%. Uh, in other words... If I sell a product, it's a hundred dollar price and I make a $20 profit, I would love my cost to get sold to also be $20. Where like that profit to cost to get sold ratio is a hundred percent. That would be beautiful. This tells me I have a highly potent product. Um, if I'm selling a product in my kind of pack, that bottom line profit's way, way less. It's maybe 50% or, or 0.5 then I may have a product that's going to really be chewing up a lot of cash. Like you actually described this earlier, Todd, where you're like, man, I woke up, I'm generating 90 K a month in revenue, but I'm running out of cash. What in the world is going on? Well, what's going on is that this monster that I've built, this Amazon business is just, it's like making a huge sucking noise, sucking up all of my capital. And I'm not getting the return on that investment. That's high enough to really make me happy with those investments. And so as we get more sophisticated, we're going to have great books because we need them to tell us the truth. And we're going to start pivoting our mindset to be a little bit more return on investment oriented instead of just profit. And, and I'll tell you why, by the way, you guys all have friends. I have friends that have a warehouse that has three and a half years worth of inventory in it. And but, but here's what they say. Well, but Tyler, I'm going to make a huge profit when I finally sell this inventory. And, and what Todd and I are going to say to them is, do you understand how long your cash is tied up? You're, you're not ever going to be happy with that return on investment unless you optimize for return on investment, which might mean killing some products and maybe favoring products that have higher velocity over products that just have in a vacuum high margins. And so I don't want to get too much into the weeds of that. A lot of content that can help you do the math, but just think in my mindset, all right, profit was the, was the price of admission. I don't get to be in business if I don't have profit. Now I need to start thinking about return on investment.